Good afternoon, everybody. Well, thank you very much for coming today. Can anybody hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. okay, good. Um, this is our first sort of pilot for Education Day for our London branch, and um, I could not resist to talk to you about the communism. The first, very first topic that emerged out of a number of topics, and I think um, oppressive governments all around the world are something we've got to be on guard, we've got to be really looking out for, and we've got to recognise it. So if I may, in the next half an hour, I'd like to share my beliefs, opinions, and just, just a actual reality of what we were going through as family and uh, friends, and obviously the people of Eastern Europe. I've written some notes, I've written kind of um, a timeline of the communism, how it all started, we need to understand how the communism started, where it came from, then what it evolved into, and then how it ended. And the way it ended, I got quite a few emphases on the part where it ended. So I'm going to be a little bit in more detail the way it ended and how it ended, how we brought down such evil totalitarian uh, kind of democracy. And uh, this was hugely, hugely popular in terms of you know we we, we can restructure, we can we can uh, bring down governments, we can do it peacefully, and that's what we did with communism. So let me begin. A mighty crowd of 16,000 gymnasts is about to take the stadium of Strahov in Prague on a journey of celebration of the communist regime <coughs> in a mass game called Spartakiada. The regime that portrayed itself superior, giving a formula for an equal, democratic and socialist society. Here, in the heart of Europe, Czechs and Slovaks are part of an experiment <coughs> to change the world. The state saw a new kind of society a new type of human being. They sought to erase the past and reprogram the nation memory. The widespread demands to reform the society were, however, brutally crushed <coughs> by Warsaw Pact allies. Czechoslovakia became a kingdom of forgetting. Yet, there is a persistent rebellion amongst artists, intellectuals, who do not submit to this type of society. Thanks to a footage locked away in the National Archives and from revisiting my childhood memories, I shall take you on a quick journey of the people's life during these extraordinary times. 8th of May, 1945, unconditional surrender of Axis power. The Allies accepted Germany's surrender. About a week later, Adolf Hitler had committed suicide. <coughs> VE Day, victory in Europe celebrates the end of the Second World War. Central and Western Europe are ravaged by a ruinous war beyond recognition. The nation states are declared beyond repair and of if self-determination of any kind of future society. What is yet to be cast upon Central and Eastern Europe is even more evil, even more ruinous than fascism. It is a Stalinism communist regime. Dressed up the communism with a human face, in simple terms, this is their, this is their lost world for the next 40 years to follow. My two late granddads fought in the war. Both came back home. One without his leg, the other, the other one mentally scarred by the horrors of the war. But they both did come back alive. By May 1948, the Iron Curtains falls onto the Czechoslovakian state in the heart of ancient Europe continent for the next 41 years years. Czechoslovakian Communist Party gatherings in Prague and Bratislava rallied the masses, reaching a staggering 2.5 million party members in the streets. This is the most significant party majority outside the Soviet Union. However, the communists do not command a majority in a parliament. The Communist Party, however, gains the power under a spectacular political coup, be it no more an illusion. Democracy is submerged and the communists emerged. Overnight, the nation wakes up in a horror of what is being done to them. A witch hunt begins between the state and the citizen. A first entree on a communist menu is to nationalise all the private sector property. A good communist is also an excellent socialist and shares and cares for all. A class struggle with the state begins. By the year of 1950, only five years since the ruinous Second World War, a young state of Czechoslovakia is in the grip of Stalinism terror. So-called sham show trials take place. 
any kind of political opposition or dissent to the regime are punished by the most brutal public displays of them all, sham show trials with a death penalty stage in the end. Political prisoners are plenty. Sadly, the country of our ancestors becomes an epicenter for these atrocities. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a project fear of leaving the EU with no deal. This is a different type of project fear. You're shot or hang dead if you show to be complicit. A quarter of a million people are convicted and hundreds executed for their political crimes. The evidence is fabricated, the government supplies the witnesses, and it is made absolutely sure that these appalling stage show trials are your TV program or radio debate during the day for those few lucky ones who own a TV set. Very dark times set in. Innocent people are executed for freedom, conspiracy theories with the West, and espionage with the US. Everybody becomes a target. Society becomes very afraid. The politics of fear are installed. The wall to shield the East from the West is almost complete. Yet, some brave souls who plead guilty of these uncommitted grotesque crimes still hold their head high in the eyes of regime to never, never surrender while awaiting the gunshot in the head. Hitler leaves way for Stalin with, the tra with that trademark moustache now with a slightly kinky twist. New work concentration camps are built deep in Siberia. The prisons overfill with anti-establishment political prisoners. The truth and reality are entirely concealed. The state controls everything, the way people vote, bring up their children and most importantly what they're allowed to see. The year 1965, the glory of agricultural collectives. Socialism is being brutally and often lethally enforced in a countryside. People have lost their incentives to work, land and cattle. Poverty, hunger, misery are all too familiar joys of post-war austerity times. The state seizes almost all land, property and strips the ordinary folk of everything she or he has. New agricultural collectives are the answer. They are supposed to bring social haven for the comrades working in pretended fraternity and collective team efforts. But what does ordinary folk supposed to do when she or he doesn't obey the orders of the state? They are quietly evaporated by it. Sounds familiar? Maybe in George Orwell's 1984 novel, which I brought along with me. Please feel free to have a look. With the, uh, with the author's vivid and untamed fantasy. But do not be fooled, this is an actual reality. Socialism claims yet more lives. It is bringing even more misery onto the ordinary folk's life. Pretended abundance and record harvest and tractors production are made before the big plans are even announced. The reality has no longer significance and it no longer matters that there had been dry some months on record with the crops taking the blow. Subjectivity is the new norm. Law seems the subject of politics and one's membership to the Communist Party is a golden ticket to the Communist Paradise. Socialists are always the winners. My land grandmother, stripped of her Joyce, was enslaved entirely by the agricultural collectives. She had no idea that there were free time to be had. Her day started early at 6 a.m. and ended at 11 p.m out in the fields of agricultural collectives. But she was lucky, she loved to enjoy labour in the fields. The communist platitudes replaced violent attitudes. The problem was that the communists took the land off, therefore people lost the love for the land. The communism was, as it turned out, built on a lie. Hypocrisy has reached another level when people say one thing at home and another in the public. My parents did find the cracks in the system to escape the trouble. Prague Spring, 1968. The communists, in desperate atem attempt to fill the cracks, elected a new leader, Alexander Dubček, who was supposed to bring a new form of communism, a socialism with a human faith, <coughs> form of a liberal politics to hold back the pressure from the public. The censorship was temporarily abolished. 
Few people could travel a beacon of light. Europe had a short brief period of time to change, to be different. Czechoslovakia wanted to go alone, to be independent from the USSR structures. It sounds like Brexit, doesn't it? New communism reforms were extremely popular. Nation has woken up to a full blossom of, in Prague Spring. Life couldn't be better. Freedom smelled like a cherry blossom. 9th of August 1968, defending socialism against Dutch reforms. Heavy military machinery tanks woke people up. In the middle of the hot summer night, frightened nations saw the horror. Allies of Warsaw Pact Communist Party invaded every single village, town, city in Czechoslovakia. The entire country was strangled in the hold of, in the hold of, of, of Soviet army. Operation Danube had begun. Tanks, soldiers with Kalashnikovs, rifles, were roaming the streets. My late grandmother grabbed her two daughters. One of them was my mother. And they all hid in underneath bunker they had in the house. The makeshift bunker was not used since the Second World War. My late granddad was brave enough to come out of the house with other men to see what was being done to them. All they could see were Soviet tanks, armed soldiers, and martial order in the streets were quickly taking charge. But these troops were not Americans. The West was supposed to be an enemy, as good communists always told us. How very mistaken. They were, in fact, Soviet military armed forces of Warsaw Pact allies. Allies. The nation was at its knees in a state of shock. There were, of course, multiple casualties. A peaceful invasion, it was not. The year 1967, normalization. The communists had failed to reform the system spectacularly. The process to reverse the reform and the reformers was called normalization. The reinforcement of Iron Curtain had followed. The dimes of social depression had followed, as intended in the communist utopia. Hardline communists censored all footage, movie or any traces of unflattering rhetorics or negativity expressed towards the regime. Speaking out got the highest form of punishment or exile for these kind of state political crimes. The era of forgetting was installed by the regime, erasing any traces of negativity against the Soviet regime. State confirmatory replaced belief and reality. There was not reality anymore. My dad was a moderate communist. He was a member of the Communist Party. As a social worker within the education sector, he simply had to obey the state. He could not attend my little sister's church christening. No photos could be taken either. And this was a severe price for him to pay to his newly born darling daughter. I could see his watery eyes filled with tears on that Sunday morning when we all went to church for the big moment. The communists were atheists and did not support or believe in religion. Not my father could have pretended otherwise. 1st of May 1976, amid the communist regime, my dear mother gave birth to a healthy baby boy. I was born. She did not make it into the hospital, so I was born at home. It was a Labour Day, the celebration of communism by all workers and socialists who had to march in every single town and village for the day May parade. It was punishable not to. The baby births or urgent medical care seemed not to be the priorities. I guess I picked up the wrong day with the communists. My first breath in the new world was a proper communist one. However, as a child, I never liked marching miles for hours giving fake, fake acknowledgements or approvals of gratitude to the communist elite. This really felt like a double speak, a virtual reality, a science fiction movie in a slow motion. As a child, I could see people who were exposing the gaps between the socialist rhetoric and the truth. Many joked about the system with a pinch of salt, as these precious moments were carefully captured via film, photography and media. Black markets, agricultural collectives and communist apparatchiks were the main themes to laugh about with the communist authorities. Something finally had to give in. 1st of January 1977, Charter 77 is published. Art and music 
where the only space where people's feelings could sleep. <coughs> Somehow, miraculously, magically, people understand the coded language of disapproval, rebellion, and just the pure disagreement with the regime. I have experienced this incredible human intuition from one like-minded individual to the next without a word being spoken. I know how you feel. Václav Havel, famous Czech artist and intellectual, felt the same and there to act. He's organized a petition of signatures to fight for human rights, descendant movement. Something incredible has just happened. Sadly, Václav, the bravest soul of them all, paid an utter price. He was assigned a non-stop 24-7 police surveillance by the state and later thrown in the jail. The police were patrolling with their dogs in every single move, in every single move. Can you even imagine what life must be like, must be like? George always, Institute of Hate, would come near for us to truly understand the restriction of freedom and his free movement. Yet, the snowball gathered pace. 26th of April, 1986. Number four nuclear reactor in a Chernobyl nuclear power plant near the city of Pripyat in the north of Ukraine and the USSR exploded. They didn't tell us. The communists. First few days followed with the silence. I remember later my mother was telling me, do not pick any strawberries in the garden and you must wash your hands twice when you come from when you back when you come back from outside. But why do you have to do this, all these things, Mother? Why? She was right. And we were indeed in the path of the radioactive ash cloud. I'm here today, though, and standing, cancer-free so far. Thank you, God. Russia kept silent about this human error disaster on a global scale. Finally, a month later, iodine tablets had arrived to protect our thyroid glands. As a child, I could see a misery, cynicism, and decline for the peasants. Yet the communists had their golden star, the highest communist civic award for lifetime work achievement, an insult to a citizen who had just been exposed to a potential radi radioactivity. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand this is not a science fiction movie. This was indeed the communism. Utopia from beginning to an end, and the end is near. November 17th to December 29th, 1989. Velvet Revolution, the voice of forgotten people. I remember, my, I remember asking my dad, why are you not going to work today? And he said, son, we are going to be free. I need to head down, downtown for a few days. And yes, we were becoming free. The Velvet Revolution was a non-violent position of power in what was then Czechoslovakia by a peaceful demonstration in response to the collapse of the Berlin Wall. The popular demonstration against the one-party system and government of the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia, including students and older dissidents. The result was the end of 41 years of one-party rule in Czechoslovakia and a subsequent dismantling of the command economy and conversion to a parliamentary democracy. At last, we were coming to see the light in the end of the tunnel. November 17, 1989, International Students' Day. Riot police suppressed a student demonstration in Prague. The event marked the 50th anniversary of a violent suppressed protest against the Nazi storming of Prague University in 1939, where 1,200 students were arrested and nine killed. The 1989 even event sparked a series of demonstrations from November 17th to late December and turned into an anti-communist demonstration. On November 20th, the number of protests assembled in Prague grew from 200,000 the previous day to an estimated half of a million. The entire top leadership of the Communist Party, including General Secretary, resigned on November 24th. On November 27th, a two-hour general strike involving all citizens in Czechoslovakia was held, which was, which was the start of many weeks of protests to follow. In response to the collapse of other Warsaw Pact governments and in the increasing street protests, the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia announced on November the 28th that it would relinquish power and end the one-party state. 
Two days later, the federal parliament formally deleted the section of the constitution giving the communist party a monopoly of power. Barbed wire and other obstructions were removed from the border with the West Germany and Austria in early December. On December 28th, 1899, Václav Havel became the president of Czechoslovakia. The communism did really end. Ladies and gentlemen, these were extraordinary times we lived under in Eastern Europe. On my recent visit to Slovakia, I have asked my parents and godparents what do they remember from the communist times. I could hear some kind of nostalgia, some kind of bitter memories. You know, it will take a couple of, gener it will take a couple of generations to wash away the footprints of that evil regime entirely. The moral devastation of the socialist social class had been done. I am filled with dread that some of our modern day British politicians flirt with words such as comrades, socialists and even community methods. I can hear and see the evil again. Not more. Not ever again. The past is a history and the future is a mystery. The present is a gift, so make sure you make the most of it. Thank you very much for listening to me.